Thank you, Louis. Good morning, everybody. And it was very scary to see this morning the pictures when we were much younger. And, and suddenly feeling here standing, there's not more. And uh, um, Alex Vandeler and Francois Meslin, who were much older, and suddenly I've become one of the oldest here. So that's really scary. But it's great to see you all. I've been with many groups, and I still, the rabies group is the one that I feel most like family. You know, we know each other a long time, and I think it's the most, it's the greatest group because everybody is here because we all feel very committed about it. And therefore, it was really a pleasure to be the co-lead of Working Group 2. And we changed a little bit the name that initially was given to us because we saw that strategic and operational support was giving the real dimension of the work that this working group um, was planning to do. We started last year, about February, and the co-chair, I co-chair it with um, Vivian Ivar from uh, ECOWAS, and very much thank here all the, the co-leads, um, sorry, also the, the work stream leads who have been really instrumental in, in the work done, and also all the participants. And I miss Rachel here because Rachel has been really the spider in the web. And I would like to make the hybrid between Spider-Man and Wonder Woman and call her Spider-Woman from now on because she's really the one who's keeping us all together and, and focused and, and really has provided the excellent support. Special applause here. So the key objectives of this working group was to actually move from this fragmented activities in different countries to a something more harmonious and integrated control and regional strategy. And also to look at the regional collaboration. Uh, we see that if one country is free of rabies, there is a constant danger of reintroduction, as we have seen, for example, with Malaysia in Asia or Bali. So we have here six clear products that we were going to develop, and I will go into one and one, and I will ask some of the co-leads, or sorry, the work stream leads to elaborate on them. And Andre, where are you? There, okay. So to start with the actually the roadmap, and I would like to pass it over to you to explain a bit more. Over to you, please. Uh, thank you so much, Katinka. Um, so, yes, I am the workstream lead for the roadmap. Um, the initial objective was to say, how can we assist countries to progress their rabies elimination efforts using the stepwise approach towards rabies elimination tool? And that very quickly evolved into something much bigger in that it allows countries to measure that progress, but also is now turned into a way to link rabies endemic countries with the tools and resources that have been developed. From the rabies tool mart that was discussed to the national strategic template to follow up activities like the national bridging workshop and PBS workshops as well. So it, it's truly turned into something that links a lot of the UAR workstream activities together while still giving countries that opportunity to develop those work plans and progress their rabies elimination efforts. Thank you, Katinka. Okay, thank you very much. On the, Thomas, I will give you afterwards on the oral rabies, just very briefly on the national strategic plan. I think many of you are familiar with this. This, was, this template was uh, developed and and Thomas Muller was the lead of this work stream. This is actually to guide countries to develop their own national strategic plans. And I think it's, it's a really very nice plan, very detailed, uh, detailed information given on how to develop the plan. Uh, I had a little bit of difficulties this morning to find it on the website. I think there we need to, because it's not really clear under the resources, and I think we need to elevate that a little bit more so it's easier to find. Um, it's now it's in English and also has been translated into French, which is very helpful. And gradually we need to see how countries can best use it. 
um, it has nice tables already made, it has different templates, it has a lot of instructions, and I think it's, it's a really very user-friendly user document. But clearly, once it's being used by countries, we hope to get the feedback and, and maybe to have a next round if there is anything missing. It also links nicely to the SARE um, in, in its structure. So the information after SARE workshop has been held, it can also be helpful to develop the national strategic plan. Then on the main constraints, and maybe Rachel, you would like to develop a little bit further on this? Anafarian is online, so a big thank you to her. She was really the one that pushed this forward. Uh, the main objective of this was really to sit down and identify um, the main constraints that were hampering stakeholders' efforts to get to zero by 30. Uh, so this group initially did a, a literature review, um, pulling out different categories of constraints. Uh, they also did a couple of online polls. So we had some, I think there was one for Rita last year as well as our United Against Rabies uh, online events last year, uh, in order of getting those categories of constraints and then asking stakeholders <laughs> to prioritise them. So if they had to, I mean, you can imagine that the list of constraints for a lot of stakeholders was huge, um, but we really wanted to get an idea of what were those main ones that we could then sit down and develop some solutions for. Um, and these three ones were the ones that came up the most. Uh, we did leave off resource mobilization as being um, one of the main constraints because we were about to start working group three and we know that resource or lack of resources often comes up underlying all of these things. Um, but as you can see, kind of public knowledge, dog vaccination, dog ecology and dog population management were really highlighted as some of those key ones. Um, so dog vaccination, we've now obviously started a, a work stream around this to get a bit more detail on it. Um, really nicely, it did kind of come up in these polls as well that um, people's proposed solutions for a lot of these were actually to include them more in the national strategic plan. So it linked back really nicely to kind of pushing that need for developing a, a robust national strategic plan as well. Um, but we have our, our categorized and prioritized list of constraints. And the idea from there is that we'll just keep building um, new work streams or new solutions to those. Yeah, and there had been some discussion on the dog population management. There are other groups outside of the forum that also deal with that, but still it comes back over and over again as, as really a, an important issue. So this might need some more discussion. So maybe there is some opportunity in this forum also to discuss it a bit more. How do we integrate this dog population management uh, into the rabies control? Um, just we have on vaccination a world cafe, and this is really blue sky thinking. Uh, we look very much forward to all your creativity. Um, so we will have that at the end of today. So um, I look forward to that very much, and hopefully we get some new ideas, and also see because there is some overlap possibly with between the work streams. How with the dog vaccination we can better work together here. Um, then the next one is on the monitoring and evaluation. Here we were having a little bit of problems, I can say a little bit of setbacks. Um, the group wasn't able to really develop well this work stream. So we have put it at the moment on hold because some of the elements are being developed by, for example, work stream, uh, working group one and we might need to, to reactivate and rethink it again. And as you mentioned, Bernadette, this is a very important one. One would be, there was also a little bit of discussion, will it be monitoring and, and evaluation of country programs, or will it be of the overall United Against Rabies? Uh, so this is something that is still under discussion, and maybe we can have um, some points on this later as well. Uh, then on the revision of the WHO recommendations, and Thomas is here, the work stream lead. Over to you, please. Yeah, thank you, Katinka. Um, I mean, we all know that there exists a great paradox in the field of global rabies elimination. Uh, while oral rabies vaccination is the main component of um, elimination of rabies from wildlife populations, which cause only modest human deaths, um, you know, or are we 
uh, is not used to complement uh, parenteral vaccination for elimination of uh, rabies in bug populations, which are responsible for more human death than any, any other single uh, zoonotic agent. Uh, so, and uh, that's why, you know, we set out uh, to update the 2007 uh, WHO uh, recommendations on oral vaccination of dogs. So uh, in contrast to this um, 2007 document, you know, here the focus uh, will be shifted on practical implementation of oral vaccination instead of, you know, focusing again on the development of uh, uh, oral rabies virus uh, uh, vaccines. And in order to promote uh, implementation of ORB as a complementary tool in future campaigns. And um, the, the idea is, you know, to come up with a document that is endorsed by all three um, uh, international organizations, uh, what we call the tripartite, including, uh, you know, OIE, WHO, and FAO, to make sure, you know, we are going to make a difference, you know, and uh, it would be my, uh, or it's my pronounced wish, you know, that we, you know, use that document to replace other existing documents mm -hmm. on this topic and make clear this is now the state uh, that is um, um, state of affairs that is the standard. So we are uh, hoping to get, uh, you know, this um, document, um, let's say the, um, the, the draft version finalized uh, in a few weeks time. Uh, so that um, maybe at the end of the year, we will have, you know, a, a decent document available. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Thomas. So the review process and then to get it as a tripartite document, that is always a little bit a challenging uh, process. So we need to see how we can get that, because I think it would give it much more strength to the document if we are able to, to have it endorsed as a tripartite document. Then the latest work stream is, is really on the integrated cross-cutting cutting issues. I think it was already interesting to uh, hear about smallpox and rinderpest, but especially the neglected tropical disease pathway or roadmap, and to see how we can link in rabies there. Uh, this work stream is actually very active, um, and Rachel, you have been accompanying them. Um, they are looking on the one hand, you know, for example, combining rabies with PPR, peste petit ruminant. There is some experiences in Sierra Leone and Liberia, and now they're trying to further pilot it. Uh, we have had one webinar on this specifically, but also looking at other interventions like, for example, uh, childhood vaccination and, and, and dog vaccination. Uh, for example, there's examples from East Coast fever in Tanzania where vaccinating calves against East Coast fever uh, could be a possibility to vaccinate them, um, children uh, as well, because it's the women bringing, taking care of the calves. So this looking at very different options, on the one hand, combining different diseases in different animals and integrating rabies, but also looking, for example, on the dog, echinococcosis control and rabies vaccination, or, vaccine, or vac rabies vaccination and tenia, tenia um, multiceps uh, that was kind of suggested by Sarah Cleveland. Uh, she has good experience on that, or even treatment against mange, so combining uh, different uh, activities. Just to mention here also, we talk, you know, we need these interventions at community level. So just to give you an example, not from rabies, but for example, in Papua New Guinea, we are looking at COVID-19 and African swine fever. What is happening at community level, it's the women that take care of the pigs. So for African swine fever, you also need you know, social distancing, so keeping biosecurity, cleaning and disinfection, and the same messages or similar messages for COVID-19. So to kind of create this awareness about the importance of uh, um, biosecurity, uh, vaccinations, et cetera. So here we are, I think there are new opportunities that we could explore. This is the end of my presentation.